Hi guys, Ali Duzet here, and we just saw a absolutely monumental debate last night between uh, Joe Biden and uh, Donald Trump, and it was crazy. And beforehand, I had pulled up the, the chart of this to just see what I could see. And today, uh, in the aftermath, I thought, okay, we better we better dig into this thing. Okay, let's go to a one chart view. This is the chart of the moment that this presidential debate started at 9 p.m. Eastern time in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh boy, with a nine degree Capricorn rising uh, right there. And here we have a 29 degree Libra midheaven. Oh man, I hadn't even thought about that until right this minute as I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, oh boy, oh boy. Let's go ahead and look at the double chart here. On the outer ring is America's birthday. And one thing that I thought was really, really interesting about the debate last night is this little section right here. Do you see these two suns? Let's flip the charts. Um, okay, now America's birthday is right in the middle. We always count it from July 4th, 1776 at 5, 10 p.m. in Philadelphia. Uh, and America's natal sun is at 13 degrees of cancer. Technically, 13 degrees and 19 minutes of cancer. And this Venus right here was at 13 degrees and 14 minutes of Cancer. So, so close to being, uh, they're already exact, but like they're literally minutes off. I mean, what, uh, five minutes off? Incredible. So that is a really tight um, conjunction. And then we also have America's natal Jupiter and Venus at five degrees and 30 degrees of Cancer conjunct the presidential debate's sun at six degrees of cancer and you know the descendant is floating right about in there which as i'm talking about it and saying the word descendant in the context of the presidential debate i'm like oh that feels real symbolic <laughs> would you not agree okay <clears throat> okay let me find the other thing okay this this i thought was interesting the um natal Chiron for America is at 20 degrees of Aries. And of course, we just passed America's uh, Chiron return. And here we have the part of fortunate 21 degrees of Aries. And I just felt like, oh, yes, this really was, uh, it really showed a highlight on some, some national wounds, if I may, uh, really highlighted places where we may be struggling to find mastery. Oh man, and here is this Jupiter transiting conjunct our natal Uranus, which again, Uranus, when Uranus is in play, you know, I was talking to one of my friends, Seidel Schultz, who said that when she thinks of Uranus, she doesn't think of the unexpected, she thinks of the call to authenticity, and I loved that. Um, this is definitely a call to authenticity. In Gemini, right here, this little conjunction is showing a huge magnifying glass on all of the nation's ability to look between what is true and what is not true. What have we been told and what is the reality? And I think that that was uh, really on display last night. It's been really interesting because um, a couple of weeks ago, I saw some kind of something on the internet where this guy was talking about how half of the population is basically getting fed only only images of the current guy in the white house um you know speaking coherently like it, he looks like he has his stuff together and then the other half of america is only getting you know the cuts where he is absolutely incomprehensible and clearly has dementia okay so we have these two camps and so and this person argued that this is a function of social media and the incredible curating that the algorithm does where people see what they want to see in kind of a really literal way um and so to me that uh, like not, not to make it too personal but i was a little bit shocked when i saw the state of the union address because i expected so much more incoherence than there was and then at the same time, I have some people that I know in real life where I mentioned the obvious dementia that is happening in the resident of the White House at this time. And um, the person I was talking to was absolutely flabbergasted and offended that I would think he had dementia. 
which me I thought was obvious. I thought everyone knew that, but um, but apparently not. And she's like, "How dare you say that? Of course he doesn't have dementia. What are you watching?" And I'm saying like, "What are you watching?" Um, well, we're watching different clips that are being curated by these different algorithms, and there's there's a whole swath of America that truly had no idea how far gone uh, our current uh, leader is, if we shall say that. And that little conjunction of Uranus and Jupiter man in Gemini is just this huge invitation of um, seeing what is true and what has the projection been? You know, where, where have we been told one thing? And actually something else was going on. Ooh, way, I don't know, that just, uh, that showed right up. Let's see, where's the ascendant in the main chart? Okay. Very, very interesting. Um, let's see what else was going on in here. This Saturn trine the sun and trine Mercury is really, really interesting. Uh... I see, because it's sandwiched right in between. Um, Saturn is that harbinger of karma, calling back to us the things, like the boomerang. We put things out into the world, and Saturn is the law of the harvest. And so here is some big harvesting of what especially has been verbalized. Sorry, that was a garbled way to say it, but the things that have been verbally stated um, karma has been showing up during that debate, you know, and I think that that is very clear that I think we saw some verbal karma and some verbal law of the harvest there in a bunch of different ways. <clears throat> On the one hand, we had Trump who is famous for kind of like looking very unhinged and like obsessing over different things and getting off topic to defend himself and to, I don't know, make the claims that he's going to make. And then on the other hand, we have, you know, Biden, who was kind of like incoherently rambling. And I think for both of them, we saw some law of the harvest action, where on the one hand, clearly Trump has received some training to stay a lot more on topic and to um, kind of button up his lips, you know, when when necessary. I wouldn't say he was perfect by any means, but I think this was very shocking to see that he like a little bit had it together compared to the past um, in that respect. And then on the other hand, we saw the the law of the harvest with Biden and how he was able to verbally present himself. So ah, very, very interesting. Ah, let me share my screen again. Now, one thing, let me see if I have, let's go back to one chart. And I'm going to select a new chart that I want to take a quick look at, if I have it. Okay, here's the rectification of Donald Trump. Yeah, there we go. So this is Donald Trump's birth chart. Now remember that he was born during a lunar eclipse on the Gemini and Sagittarius axis. Uh, I love this <laughs> little Mars right there next to the Ascendant. I think we see that in him all the time as he's kind of like pushing forward and like jumping ahead and um, sometimes making a lot of actions before he really thinks it through. Uh, and it all just shows up right there in his Ascendant. But I wanted to see this with the two charts and I don't know why I did that. Okay. With the de with the presidential debate, let's see what's going on. So this is very very interesting to have. In the context of Donald Trump, we have uh, his natal Saturn uh, conjunct the transiting Mercury, and he, they have his natal Mercury conjunct the Sun and the Descendant. So just such a huge huge highlight on his. Uh, communication last night, which I think was obvious, right? <clears throat> this is pretty interesting. All of the stuff that was happening in his eighth house, the house of um, inheritance and other people's resources that we had the moon and Neptune and the North node and the part of fortune. 
to me, I'm looking at that and thinking, okay, the stars like literally aligned for for him to basically like look good in the eyes of people in general. Look at all of this in the eleventh house, in the eighth house. That is uh, totally, totally interesting. Now I have okay the Joe Biden rectification. So this is Joe's chart, and I haven't looked at these ahead of time. Um, <clears throat> Oh, oops, this is them. This is Donald Trump and Joe Biden, which is also interesting. But let's go back to that. Let's take a look at the presidential debate. And now this has the debate in the middle. And so this is very, very interesting that his natal midheaven is exact. The presidential debates series. Why did I say series? This is the black moon. Yeah. Which is a really interesting placement. The Black Moon is going to deal with boundaries. It's the dark feminine. As I'm seeing this, I'm thinking, okay, what what is this? What is the application of this to have his needle midheaven, the most public thing about him, exact that Black Moon in that moment? Oh man, it's like literally the stars aligned to shine upon. Uh, I don't know. All the stuff that he didn't want anybody to see, I guess. <laughs> oh, so, so, so interesting. <clears throat> and his son and Venus are conjunct. That's very interesting in the 12th house, um, in his natal 12th house. But here it was on display for everyone with that 11th house placement. So very, very, very interesting stuff. Let's go back to um, just the presidential debate because yesterday I did not I did not think that I was I was gonna watch a debate that was gonna make history books like, you know like the Nixon debate the famous one this was one that will make the history books I think that truly the outcome of our nation will be different because of the performance that was on display last night I really just do think that. And so one thing that really comes to mind as I am talking about that is how interesting it is that the sun and Venus right here are sandwiching the descendant. Now, the ascendant and the descendant make up this line, this horizontal line across the chart. And the ascendant over here, um, you know, when you take your first breath or like at the moment of this debate, the debate starts, you look out the window to the east, and that is the ascendant. It's whatever's rising at that time from the perspective of the earth. And the descendant is where, where is the sun going down? It doesn't matter if the sun's up or down, but like on the horizon, on the Western horizon, what's going down? And over here we have cancer. And as, as I'm looking at that and seeing, just seeing this placement the word descendant alone is just so symbolically rich. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> we're seeing a descendants. I, I, I don't know. That's, that's my sense. Is this the beginning of a dissension? It looks like it could be um, among America as a, as an identity, like America as it, what it is, like the son of it, S-U-N. And then that Venus right there is, our money, our ability to receive the good things. Um, it's, I don't know, Venus is relationship oriented. It's ally oriented. I'm like, oh man, is this signifying the descent of a whole lot of things that we have counted on as Americans? I don't know, but it would not surprise me if that would be an accurate way to interpret this chart. Down here in the third house, I love that. Having the North Node in the third house, um, the destiny of that moment was to be focused on peer-to-peer -peer communication. And that's certainly what happened. And it did indeed, uh, I mean, like this part of fortune right there next to Chiron, highlighting some soul wounds that the nation is dealing with. And then this uh, Neptune over here, Interestingly, in the third house, Neptune can deal with, um, you know, illusion versus delusion. 
you know, spiritual connection. But I think we really saw that in play with a lot of um, garbled speech and garbled meanings last night. So that is just really something. This moon conjunct Saturn, which is not a super tight conjunction, but to me, I do count it that they're close enough. Look at look at that, and then look how they trine this Mercury. And I already talked about that, but the uh, the law of the harvest affecting their communication last night. But the thing to remember is that in a mundane chart, the moon represents the feelings of the people of a nation. And here we have the feelings of the people of a nation and kind of sandwiched right in between. And we have 19, 25, 29 degrees. We have the law of the harvest, the feelings of the people. And then right here we have um, kind of a spiritual call, spiritual information that can delude us or inform us. And whether or not somebody is deluded by their spiritual information or informed appropriately by it, you know, depends person to person. And I think that that's kind of what we're going to see on a personal level. People are going to look at this debate and draw their own conclusions and how much are they going to be accurate? How much is it going to be like a little delusion fueled? That will depend person to person. But all of us are, are going to be seeing for ourselves, I don't know, the fruits of the actions that have come before us and even some of our own actions. Like, I don't know how, you know, again, politically involved and aware that you are, but when I look at this chart, I'm like, okay, this is a chart that's really drawing our attention to this idea that it's almost time to pay the piper. I would say not totally quite yet, but, um, but just that this law of the harvest is coming up real close to the moon. And I, I don't want to like mislead anybody. The moon moves very quickly. It's going to be, um, hanging out with Saturn every single month. It's going to be exact all the time. It was exact with Saturn probably a few hours before this event. Okay, so, um, but I'm just saying like in the context of this exact chart as something that was important, the birth of a new era, the era in which the entire planet has lost confidence in the recognized leader of the free world, like that's a big moment, okay? And that is the moment that we're looking at right here and right here, what we're seeing is the law of the harvest is real close to the feelings of the people. And I don't know, how how is that going to affect regular people? My guess is economically, because look at this, Venus dealing with money and here in the second house, um, which of course also deals with money. What do we got going on in Taurus? We have this Mars, 13 degrees trining up to the black moon again, which so interestingly is exact Biden's midheaven. And then guess what? It goes down and makes an opposition right here with that Saturn. So to me, I'm looking at that and thinking, oh man, we are going to be seeing some new boundaries. We're going to be seeing some new, um, I don't know, the boomerang, the boomerang of this presidential debate is going to come back and thwack us right in the face, I really think, because of this conjunction. And we'll just have to see what that looks like. Let's take a look again at the um, double chart. Oh, well, this one is also okay. Um, what I'm interested to see is the, sorry, anything going on at nine degrees of Capricorn or nine degrees of um, okay, of anything else that would be important. Now, this is interesting that that ascendant is squaring that black moon during the presidential debate. So let's find that on the grid. So this is the ascendant, and it's squaring the debates. Um, uh, black moon is that the right one that I'm looking at it's this one and I don't know that is a really interesting thing to look at in the context of Joe Biden's chart um, realizing that 
It's exact. His midheaven. There it is. Look at that. 18 degrees, 18 degrees. Um, man, I don't know, but that, that seems like a very significant placement to me. So anyway, all of that is to say, I think that we did witness a shift into a new era of some kind last night. I think that that was the birth chart of it. And we're going to have to see how it plays out. I think that the law of the harvest is definitely going to be in play. I think that last night was a boomerang that's going to come back and whack the American people in the face. I think that a lot of people are going to have to answer for, um, you know, if, if they have misled the people on the nature of uh, Joe Biden's mental state. Uh, we're uh, I mean, there's just a whole lot of people that are going to have to answer for a lot of things about how we got here, right? And I think that we are gonna answer, we're, we're gonna have to answer for that, but what will that exactly look like? And when will it happen? I don't know, I guess we'll just have to find out, but we are on the roller coaster now. That election's coming right up. We'll have to see how it goes. Okay, I hope this is interesting. I hope you have a good day.